All right, video, yep, video, there it is. Um, anyway, trying a new filter. I don't think it's much use, but anyway, not a very sunny day, but pleasant enough temperatures and such. Uh, yeah, kind of an overview video, I guess. Um, general subject video. I don't know, see where it goes. I guess first off, uh, thank you. There was a few people who have... Uh, you know, we went to some trouble for, you know, my birthday and Christmas and shit. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. It's very nice of you. I haven't opened a couple of my presents yet. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully, uh, then, you know, not like I'm a pet rabbit or something. Uh, because, yeah, it's probably not doing very well. Anyway. So, yeah, thank you and such. Uh, very nice. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Um... Uh, bushes. Anyway, um, uh, tired. <laughs> yeah, I really just do not want to be awake. Uh, this is very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, what else I want to get to? Yeah, I should save that for the what the fuck. So... Uh, yeah, no. Um, I guess I'll just make a couple of these little general comments about the comments, you know, about the whole feminism thing that just turned into an argument about circumcision again, uh, which is just so annoying. And I really don't want to make a whole bunch of videos arguing this shit, but people are just so fanatical. It's incredible. Um, and then they accuse me of being the one that's insecure. I mean, come on. I'm the, just arguing that uh, I've got one and I don't see a problem. And uh, somehow that's got them all hysterical. What? What? He does, he's not admitting that uh, he knows his penis isn't working? Yeah, that's right. I'm not admitting that, idiots. Um, you know, this whole idea of the religion thing. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff starts off with religion. I mean, if it was uh, written in the Bible, thou shalt wash thy hands after going stinky poo-poo, uh, would that mean you wouldn't wash your hands? <laughs> you know, because the Bible said so. I mean, most religious traditions started for some sort of uh, rational reason. I mean, all the prohibitions about what kind of animals to eat, and, you know... I mean, all that shit just came from the fact that it was dangerous, <laughs> you know, to eat some sort of animals undercooked. Um, it was just practical. I mean, it was, you know, practical advice. Uh, and they turned it into religious doctrine. And I think that's how circumcision just started. I mean, the fact was, uh, especially thousands of years ago, um, you know, foreskin probably was pretty much a liability, uh, because, you know, they didn't need it, you don't need it, uh, you know, I'm not doing this, you know, prick bush alley naked, so my little glands don't need, uh, you know, uh, uh, irritation skin covering them to protect me from harm, <laughs> you know, uh, and so it's just a practical thing. Um, and yeah, you know, and to argue that anybody who does it now is doing it only for that reason, because some sort of tradition or religion is stupid. Uh, it's a decision. Uh, you know, and, and there's a, a strange little balance of benefits that are attached to it. And to deny that, uh, to deny there, <laughs> that there is some, um, indecisive evidence uh, it's stupid that's all it is it's just stupid so go ahead whatever have your tantrums um, you know because someone's dares to say they don't find it that, that they don't find it conceivable <laughs> that there's a liability uh, you know my the wheels on my car have worked perfectly fine <laughs> and uh, I'm satisfied customer and so fuck you. It's just stupid. I mean, when you've done both and lived both and grew up with both and become attached to both, then you can give me an argument, maybe from your perspective, about which one's better. 
But again, that's just going to be subjective based on how you uh, particularly like to do things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just don't see any point in it, that's all. It does look like sort of archaic, redundant bullshit to me. And, uh, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't see the point in it. So go ahead, wallow in yours. Uh, kiss it. <laughs> you know, uh, give it an ego boost if you need to. Uh, but don't tell me you know something. You don't know shit. Uh, so enough of that crap anyway. So, where else do we go? Um, oh yeah, some asshole keeps posting the same clip from a, a medical journal in England. And it's just so stupid. It has to do with these stupid pressure, skin pressure tests. It doesn't have anything to do with sexual performance. It doesn't have anything to do with like how fast you get an erection, how long your erections last, how satisfied your partner is. I mean, these are the matrixes that I'm going to be concerned about as a male. I'm really not going to care about whether I can tell that you got a 10 pound weight on my dick or a 5 pound weight on my dick. That doesn't matter to me. I mean, you people are just so desperate. Oh, but anyway, no, no. Fuck the subject. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is hilarious. But that's the whole point. So all this energy, all this noise, everybody comes out of the woodwork, you know, to comment on this subject. But yeah, you talk about the fact that life is a fail. <laughs> well, that's, uh, who cares? Yeah, uh, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of funny. You know, all of life is foreskin. Uh, you basically call it that. And uh, people don't take that very personal. But talk about their dick. Woo. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. Um, anyway, that is funny. Uh, uh, you know, in the horrid, imbecilic way. It's actually starting to rain. You know, that's a little irritating. I'm not in the mood for that either. Ugh, I just close my eyes and go to sleep. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can't do that while I'm walking. Uh, so, what else? So anyway, yeah, so the whole general subject of antinatalism, I guess, is the subject, right? It's the whole point of what is life, where are we going, Blah, blah, blah. And the idea that somehow we have to make this argument in such a manner as to convince the crazies. But that's the irony there. Is that we can't even convince people to lighten up, you know, on their, on their, uh, you know, foreskin fanaticism. Uh, you know, and then there's still supposed to be some hope to have a rational conversation about what life is. Uh, you can't, you know, there seems like pretty big, pretty little hope of that, uh, you know, you know. Anyway, so that seems to be the project, though. I mean, there's no other project in town but doing this whole, what's the reality of life thing. You know, and people just keep on playing these games. They keep separating it from its reality. You know, the other day I was listening to somebody's video, and I, you know, a stink bug. There's a lot of them around here for whatever reason. Uh, a stupid bug. Really dumb looking bug. Doesn't do anything. Not very interesting. And, uh, yeah, so I just was watching it. You know, it was crawling around on shit in front of me. <laughs> and you're just like, that's life, you stupid fucks. Alright, most of life is contained in one of those vessels. Uh, it's not doing anything magnificent profound, meaningful, beautiful. It's just eking out a stupid, futile existence. And uh, in spite of your self-aggrandizement and your golden foreskin, that's all you're fucking doing, idiot. You know, you're just eking your way through a stupid, idiotic, redundant procedure. <sighs> hey, look at that. Rains and now the sun is coming out. Hmm. Uh, funny. Yeah. It's like a planet with an atmosphere or something. Oh, it's weird. Anyway. 
So, uh, yeah, it's also it's all just about making the argument and, and making it in some way where you kiss people just right. <laughs> you don't irritate their irritation skin and then around their dick. And uh, so then you can get to the core of the matter, uh, you know, without them getting all hysterical. Uh, and uh, the truth is, it's so obvious. I mean, when you just dissect a little bit of this shit, you see it. You see what's going on. Uh, it's just mouths and anuses. And, uh, yeah, foreskin. <laughs> you know, there's just nothing else going on here. Um, what else? Yeah, so I, I did want to, you know, make an argument about the whole asymmetry argument. Because it's, it does seem to hang people, and it's, it's, I guess there's, again, it's another one of these things where you got to draw them a picture or something. I mean, I guess that's what it comes down to. Everything has to be put into a cartoon, so the, so it's mass consumable. And it's just a little hard to do that with concepts like, uh, you know, you have to actually imagine, uh, you know, a clean blackboard. You know, starting from the beginning and annihilate all your prejudices and preferences and understand that they're just manifestations of your brain. So your whole idea that, you know, of history, you know, well, the Cubs haven't won the World Series in 100 years and you're going to root for the underdog. You you have to eliminate all that favoritism and all that sympathy and all that nonsense and uh, get a clean perspective and then look at the choice and say, would you force something to march this trail? Uh, Is there some reason to do that? Uh, Is there something at the end of the trail? (laughs) You know, except another pointless uh, destruction of... um, Another experiment, another disposable rat uh, thrown into the game. Uh, there's no rational reason to do that because there's no rational description of the deprivation that you're rescuing something from to do it. And that really is the game. Action is provoked <laughs> by the existence of the negative state. Something is happens that degrades the life of somebody you care about. You act. Uh, you don't act when everything's okay. And the fact is that the non-existent are okay. They really are fine. They don't need your help. And uh, it's a little bit crazy. You know, to, to throw buckets of people like me, you know, at this non-existent fire you're trying to put out. I mean, you're, you're like throwing acid on somebody on fire. And they're not really somebody. It's just a mannequin. And the acid's real, and it's splashing on real people. No, well, that's not a great metaphor. But the idea of that you're doing harm and you're doing it for no good reason you're not saving anything from harm and it's like the anti-superhero you show up and just make the circumstance worse that's what you life promoters are doing you're just rah rah rooting for the bad team (laughs) <laughs> you're you're perpetuating a madness uh, merely because you have some notion that it's cute. I mean, it's just silly, stupid. It's, it's intellectually immature. Uh, 
it's irrational. It's the simplest argument. You can't rationally defend the opening of this box of Pandora poo. Um, there's just nothing, there's no potential for accomplishment. Because accomplishment is always, always, always predicated on a sentient being being put in a uh, some sort of negative state, some sort of jeopardy. And you can't make you can't make a good without creating some sort of imperfection that needs perfecting. I mean, you can't you can't play this game without manufacturing the negative first, uh, the negative potential, and that's. I mean, you can't see how that's really dumb. <laughs> you can't. And, uh, I mean, apparently people can't. I don't know, you know, and it just seems so obvious. I mean, all you have to do is have a little bit of life experience. You find out, oh, ow, that really hurt. That really sucked. I never want to experience that ever again. Just have a few experiences where you actually uttered the words out loud. I never want to do that again. Uh... And, uh, yeah, you can understand that, well, if I had to multiply that, that never, I want to never want to do that again a hundred times, because that's what somebody else is going to live through. Uh, why would I mess with this? Why the hell would I get anywhere near this crap? This is dangerous, this game we're playing. I mean, how can you not perceive the danger? <laughs> I mean, how can it not... Uh, horrify you to think of what consciousnesses have endured. They, you know, years. Hard. They're just mocking it in a sense to, to sit there and say that you can casually, just because, well, nature made it, so therefore it might be a good thing. What? <laughs> Why are you crazy? That's not a rational argument. Oh, anyway, little no drips of rain, drippy drip, splash, splash. Uh, that was the other thing, me and Tyler had a pretty good conversation about physics the other night. He was supposed to have recorded it, but I think he failed. Um, it was all about this wave crap. I made some pretty good uh, arguments explaining how... Uh, yeah, the two slit experiment is kind of bullshit, and, and uh, explanations of how some of this physics might work. Yeah, it was pretty good. So hopefully it isn't lost to the to the ether, <laughs> but it would appear it is. Ah. It just obliged me to say it all over again some other time. Yeah, sometimes you say stuff and you're saying, oh, that was pretty good. And you're almost like, oh, yeah, I like to work from that foundation. But, uh, you know, it's not written down anywhere. I mean, I didn't, you know, I composed it rather well. And I might not ever recompose it that well again. So, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's not the big picture stuff. It's wet. Incredibly wet in this yard. Sorry, I have to watch when I'm stepping with some hope. Keeping my feet dry. Another little house add on is coming along. <laughs> yeah, the add on is bigger than my house. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, rain drops on my camera and such. So, show the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Touching the button.